Okay, I'm going to be recording my rant on Oblivion versus Morrowind. First of all, I'd like to say that I'm not including anything from Arena or Daggerfall. They're just going to be excluded from the conversation. Now I'm going to tell you my story of the order that I played the games in, just to show you that I have played both games um, very extensively. Alright, what first happened is, I saw one of my friends playing Oblivion, and it looks like a really good game. But I didn't have a PC that could run it, so I decided to try the previous game, Morrowind. And when I first got it, to tell you the truth, I thought it was too hard, and I gave up after a few hours of playing it. And after a while, I finally built a PC, and I got Oblivion. And I did enjoy it a lot when I, when I first played it. So, um, after a long time of playing it and stuff, I decided I knew enough about Elder Scrolls games to um, try the previous game again, since I'm, I was pretty sure I knew how the games worked. So I gave Morrowind another try, and I was, I was just um, amazed at what they did. And really, Morrowind was, was such a better game, in my opinion that it easily wins. Now I'm gonna tell you the reasons that I thought Morrowind was better. The first thing I'd like to touch on is the character creation. Um, Morrowind had a really good character creation system. It wasn't anything significant, but the problem with the Bolivians was there were no beards. That's all I have to say about that. Now the armor in the games was significantly different. In Morrowind, you could um, you could wear all the armor you want and still have a really cool looking robe or anything you wanted still outside of that at the same time. And you could have right pauldrons and left pauldrons, so you could have like a Daedric left pauldron and some other um, right pauldron. And you could um, not just have like two gauntlets as one item, you'd have them separate. So you could... Um, there's just so many levels of customization you could use. And it's just, um, Oblivion, it just had it like, um, like your gauntlets would just, um, it'd be one pair covers your entire arms, then they just, some of them even had complete sets of armor. Like, you just get the shrouded armor, it covers your whole body, so there's not really a lot of customization. One thing people like about Oblivion, and, um, they don't like Morrowind for it, is the voice acting. Now, I do agree that voice acting is a really good concept and everything, but the way Oblivion put it, um, yeah, it was pretty good until he went through a couple more hours of the game where, like, everyone had the same voice for their race. Like, all Nords sound, sound alike, uh, all Bretons sound alike, and, like, a beggar would have uh, this weak little voice, and then when you asked him a different subject, he'd talk like, um, like a strong Imperial Legion guy. It just, um... And it really limited the stuff you could have. So they couldn't have like this really like in-depth storyline if they had to get someone to voice act all of it. And that would take too long. So they're really limited on what they could say. So it really, yeah, it just um, limited the storyline in itself. And Morrowind had, it's, it had a great idea for voice acting. Like uh, if you go up to someone, they'll say something. Um, maybe just a regular thing based on your disposition or it could be based on the quest that you're currently in but they had it limited so they could um, have the storyline in the text so you'd have a lot more stuff to read and um, a lot more story and you and it's optional if you don't want to listen to all the story you can just skim through it but if you're looking for a deep storyline and want to know what it's all about then you can read in depth about it instead of just listening to the short amount of voice acting available and Morwen's storyline was um, really great. It had this huge in-depth storyline where it, it's, it builds itself up. Because it starts out slow, having you just do these little quests for this guy, and then it starts building up into this huge storyline. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but it was really good and compelling. And um, it had a lot of lore behind it. But in Oblivion, the storyline was really, really short. And... Um, it was disappointing what they based it on, like they had all the Oblivion Gates that once you've been in one, you've been in all of them because they're almost identical. There's only like five different ones and there's 60 in the game. And yeah, that's um, 
the storyline, it just didn't quite make it, really. In Morrowind, there was just so much lore and things behind it. Like, they had so many original books for that game, and um, they wrote a bunch of things about the mainland and concerning all kinds of other stuff like Daedra and Adra and the other continents and stuff. But in Oblivion, they basically, they had almost no original books and they took most of them from Morrowind and just stacked them on the random shelves in the Mages Guild. It was just, it didn't really, uh, it was just no originality in that particular area. And also, the in Morrowind, they had these awesome Dwemer ruins where it'd um, be the rooms of all the lost dwarves and how that all happened. And that was a really cool concept for the game because it wasn't just these random dungeons and caves. It also had the Dwemer as a whole new area of exploration. Now I'm going to talk about the general difficulty of these games. Like I said, when I first tried Morrowind, I thought it was too hard. Well, it's a good concept because when you're first starting out in life, when you, I don't know, go to a new place, you're not going to be, like, the same level as everyone else. You, um, in Morrowind, you'd start out as just a low character, and you'd slowly build yourself up till you get to a point where you're just as strong as the average enemy, or, like, you go to an area and say, like, these guys are too strong, I should come back at a higher level. In Oblivion, that didn't quite happen. And, um, it's just a lot harder to do a lot of things. It takes time and effort. You can't just like go to a building, talk to this one guy, and then you've, I don't know, got a new item or something, finish the quest so simply. And yeah, um, in Oblivion, it was just too easy to do everything. It was aimed at the people who've never played Elder Scrolls and they just wanted a quick hack and slash game. All right, now I'm gonna talk about the skills. Well, in Morrowind, it had a really awesome concept where you'd have all these different skills and they'd have like long blade and short blade so um, you couldn't just like pick up any weapon and suddenly be infinitely good at it. While, um, while the combat in Morrowind it had a good concept but it didn't quite... that's one thing I didn't like where you can't just go up to a rat and just not hit it five times in a row. But while you get um, somewhat better, once you get to level 20, 25 at a skill, then you, you're pretty able to hit anything you want that's um, at reasonable speed. But in Oblivion, you could pick up, you could um, use a long blade your entire life and just um, hit things and then be like a master at it. But then you could just um, pick up a dagger and then you're also a master of that suddenly and you could pick up a bow or a blunt weapon and you hit everything instantly and um, yeah it was just you could pick up any weapon in Oblivion and just use it right off the bat without any prior training it just um, it was so unrealistic in that area now the overall size of Morrowind it was um it was completely amazing how much things they could actually fit into that game they had uh... it was just like, I don't know, three, two or three times bigger than the actual size of Oblivion, but it had a lot more stuff in it as well, um, per thing. It's not like Oblivion where every two feet is a castle. That was just, um, that was just awful. Now, um, um, for the factions in Morrowind, they had like, what, like 13 different factions and stuff? You'd um, choose one of three houses. You could do the Mages Guild, the Thieves Guild, the Fighters Guild. You could do the Imperial Cult in the Temple, and you can join the East Emperor Company with a Blood Moon expansion. And there's there's a bunch more. I can't think of them all right now. But um, in Oblivion, they had what like four factions if you don't count the main quest. They had um, Mages Guild, Fighters Guild. Thieves Guild and Dark Brotherhood. Those are just like the four factions and four storylines. And um, the thing with those are that it's so unrealistic how um, in Oblivion, at the right where you're rising to the rank where you're about to advance to 